Uh, I request good morning students. I request everyone to write present uh, in the chat box so that I can take it as an attendance. Okay, those who have joined late, kindly write, uh, kindly write presents are in the chat box. Those who are joining now, kindly write presents are uh, present in the chat box. I hope you can see the screen and hear my voice also. Okay. Well, I'm uh, teaching subject mergers, acquisition, and corporate restructuring. Okay. And uh, uh, I have taken one offline class and one online class for this. And in one offline class, we have just discussed about the syllabus of the subject, uh, wherein I have told first and the second module and fifth and the sixth module. These four modules will be of theory and the remaining uh, two modules in between. OK, they will be of uh, theory as well as problems. So I'll first, first of all finish off the theory and let us see if offline classes starts, then uh, I'll start with problems or if offline classes doesn't start, I'll uh, record the problems uh, and uh, share, uh, share in the uh, online class itself. So let's see. First, I'll finish off the uh, theory classes and in the previous uh, lecture in online mode we we have started with first module and i have just gone through and explained the beginning uh, few slides of uh, the module one okay this is not that difficult one but uh, interesting and uh, you can remember it with the help of examples okay so let's begin uh, okay before i start those who have not written present in the chat box kindly write present I'll mark it as an attendance for you. Okay. As you were doing in yesterday's class, in Varunsa's class, okay, in the same way, right present in the chat box. Uh, I'll begin with the session. Okay. Okay, it is not taking proper slideshows. Well, anyways, I'll uh, go with this. Again, so this is our module one. Am I audible and uh, you can see it, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. So, uh, in this uh, first module, we are going to study all this. Okay, we have discussed this, uh, and uh, we knew that a merger is between two companies, three companies, four companies. They are coming together uh, and combining together and forming a single company, a single entity. OK, uh, they, this can be done friendly. Friendly merger can happen or a forceful takeover can happen uh, by one company, which is the acquirer company, to uh, the target company. So the acquirer company will forcefully acquire the target company. OK, uh, two or three companies can merge together in a friendly way and a third new different company can be formed. That is A and B company merge together and form a company named as C. Huh? 
ठीक है वन कंपनी एस सी ए एंड बी कम्बाइनिंग वी आर फॉर्मिंग वन कंपनी एस सी और इट कैन बी दैट ए इज एक्वायरिंग बी एंड बी इज लूजिंग इट्स एक्जिस्टेंस एंड ओनली ए इज रिमेनिंग एंड बी इज अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ ए ओके दैट कैन हैपन ठीक है एंड वी डिड ऑल दिस कैटेगरीज ऑफ मर्जर एमेलगमेशन एक्विजिशन टेक ओवर एंड मर्जर एमेलगमेशन इज वॉट वेन two companies are merging together uh, or one company is taking over another company but uh, new different company is getting formed okay uh, the example of hcl which uh, there were three or four com- three companies basically hindustan computers hindustan reprographics limited and hindustan instruments limited they combined and they formed a new company called as hindustan computers limited hcl okay totally di- uh, different company Uh, even for that matter, Vodafone Idea, uh, Vodafone SR Limited and Idea Limited, both of these companies combined and uh, they created a name of a new company called as Vodafone Idea. Okay, uh, it is the combination of uh, both their names. Okay, even that can be considered as an amalgamation. And in amalgamation, both the companies will work as if they are one company. Their balance sheet will be one. Their profit and loss statements will be one. Their marketing team will be one. Their finance team will be one. Everything. Okay. ठीक है दैट इज अमेलिगेशन सेकेंड इज एक्विजिशन एक्विजिशन इज वेन वन कंपनी इज बिगर कंपनी अनदर कंपनी इज अ स्मॉलर कंपनी एंड द स्मॉलर कंपनी इज बीन एक्वायर्ड बाय द बिगर कंपनी एंड द स्मॉलर कंपनी विल लूज इट एक्सिस्टेंस और दे विल हैव सम ब्रांचेस बट इट विल बी अंडर द कंट्रोल ऑफ द एक्वायरर okay uh, so uh, in the case of axis bank and uti i have told you uti bank was a smaller bank axis bank acquired it and you don't find any uti uh, bank branches nowadays okay or uh also uh, like um, uh, mintra was acquired by flipkart flipkart was a bigger company mintra was a pretty small company as compared to flipkart but when it acquired flipkart acquired mintra uh, flipkart didn't wanted to change the name of mintra or didn't wanted to finish off the name of mintra so mintra also existed flipkart also existed but under the control of flipkart okay mintra was under the control of flipkart Uh, and the owners of mintra had totally sold off uh, their businesses so that was the acquisition both were very happy take over is when one company is acquiring forcefully uh, and the other company doesn't want to sell their business but they somehow convince the other shareholders and they acquire the maximum uh, voting power that is 51% of the share uh, shares of that company will be acquired by the acquirer and the original owners who were there if they don't have the maximum share uh, share holding in the company then they lose their company to other players okay uh, so this was happened uh, with uh, mindtree uh, the uh, lnt uh, lnt as a uh, conglomerate they tried to acquire mindtree and they convinced the other shareholders who were having shares and the real owners of the mindtree didn't had much share they only had 20 to 25% of shares and the real owners who started the mine tree the basically the founders so they could not save mine tree by acquisition of lnt uh, so they didn't wanted to sell it so that was a takeover then de merger is the opposite of merger when there is a company uh, which is uh, which it is feeling that there are some divisions which we are not able to um, run it effectively so we will uh, de merge uh, from that okay sony ericsson Uh, is one such example sony ericsson was uh, there there were two companies basically sony and ericsson sony from japan and ericsson from uh, from europe uh, from norway uh, sorry from sweden uh, so these two companies had merged their mobile manufacturing uh, company it was not a joint venture but uh, entirely mobile was uh, getting manufactured uh, and it was a separate company later on um, uh, this they got split and so ericsson sold all its rights of mobile manufacturing to sony and sony is the only mobile phone company and uh, ericsson is out of the business okay uh, whereas okay last time someone asked me what is the difference between joint venture and a merger in joint venture only for that particular region or only for that product they are getting merged but they are working separately also okay so that product Uh, will be sold in the name of another company for example maruti suzuki if maruti suzuki swift is getting sold in india then it will be sold as maruti suzuki swift but if swift is sold outside india then it will be sold as suzuki swift but that wasn't the case with sony ericsson sony ericsson mobile phones were throughout the world okay because they had merged that uh, and later on they demerged it okay uh, uh, demerged me ericsson totally sold off all their shares and got separated 
okay so these were the categories of merger okay what we can call it in types of mergers mein there are three basically three types okay horizontal vertical and conglomerate and horizontal merger they are the merger of equals or the merger of the competitors okay whenever there are two competitors doing same kind of business then it is a horizontal merger horizontal merger of uh, vodafone and uh, idea it is a horizontal merger they were competitors okay similarly even uh, for that matter mintra and flipkart merger of uh, mintra and flipkart is also a horizontal merger both were into online retail um, and uh, flipkart and snap um, uh flipkart and uh, okay i i don't i'm not remembering one more uh, company was there uh, was into online retail so if they are come uh, coming together and merging then it is a horizontal merger again okay merger of competitors even uh, if a company is manufacturing refrigerators and another company is manufacturing washing machines even if they merge then also it is called as a horizontal merger on the basis that both are electronics company okay it is not that exactly the product should be same but at least the line of business should be same electronics is the line of business okay so that is the horizontal merger vertical merger is uh, in the process in the manufacturing process there are different stages so if one of the stages is uh, getting acquired by one of the company then it is a vertical merger okay if a car manufacturer acquires a tire manufacturer company then it is a vertical merger okay backward integration if a car manufacturer company acquires A, a a company who is selling the cars and then it is also a vertical merger but as a forward integration okay they are going they are acquiring the next stage acquiring the company who is at the next stage then it is a forward integration if the car manufacturing company is acquired acquiring a company at the previous stage then it is a uh, vertical merger in the backward integration and just for an example ford motors when henry ford uh, launched uh, or founded the ford motors uh he started backward integration was he was manufacturing the cars but he wanted uh to control the entire supply chain so he went behind 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 and uh, acquired the extraction of iron ore companies okay the company who were extracting extracting the iron ores were making the steel and that steel was getting used in the cars and he also acquired the rubber extraction uh, company so they were extracting rubber they were uh, molding the rubber making the tires and that tires were fitting into the cars so the entire backward chain starting from the iron ore extraction and rubber extraction to the manufacturing of cars he was controlling so that was the total backward integration okay uh, so that was he uh, that he acquired it uh, if uh, there is a company who is uh, manufact who is just producing or processing the milk okay and giving it uh, and selling it and there is some another company who is buying the milk and processing it to make uh, different kind of milk products okay so uh, the company who is processing the milk can acquire the company who is manufacturing the milk products and that will be called as a forward integration in vertical merger okay so horizontal will be of competitors vertical will be the uh, companies of the next stage of the previous stage or the next stage okay third is conglomerate merger we discussed conglomerate merger is again about the companies uh, who are getting merged with a bigger company but into totally different kind of a business okay so what uh, that's what we called as a conglomerate okay that a totally different line of industry one company who is uh, into uh, maybe uh, into tobacco like itc uh, they got mer- they got uh, merged with some companies who were into hotels so uh, itc hotel started and they merged uh, with companies who were uh, small companies who were uh, manufacturing fmcg products so itc uh, entered into fmcg so this is basically done conglomerate is basically conglomerate merger basically is done when there is a huge company and they want to tap uh, in the market in another industry they do want to expand basically so uh, w- when they are expanding they don't want to start with scratch scratch se start nahi karna hai apna business so they directly go and acquire a smaller company uh, at a higher price so that company will also be the owners of that company will also be very happy because my company is getting sold at a higher price um, and uh, this company can enter into that business by just acquiring that company okay whenever you hear uh, like that or to uh, expand just to expand uh, their market um, or to enter into a new market they acquire a company and enter into that okay like uh, 
let's see uh, then second is uh, next is motives of merger and acquisition merger and acquisition why they do it karte kyu hai merger and acquisition okay first of all for the procurement of supplies whoever my supplier is he is um, i want to acquire him why i want to acquire him because i need to control the uh, the supply also okay uh, like the ford uh, henry ford did henry ford was getting supply of iron from one company okay he went behind and acquired that company he acquired the supplier itself okay so that uh, he can control uh, the procurement of supply and the supplier will uh, and he can re reduce the cost of its uh, cars so that's the reason he went behind and uh, acquired it so i can uh, if there is a company who is into coal okay uh, then uh, manufacturing of uh, coal articles then they can acquire go behind and acquire the coal mines as well okay so basically the uh, the supplier is getting acquired and um, because of that the company can cut down the costs next is market expansion and strategy uh, this is similar uh, what i have told in conglomerate and they want to expand the market or even for that matter uh, horizontal merger also market expansion can be done that means if there are few customers of vodafone few customers of idea okay uh, if vodafone want to expand the market okay, they can give many schemes or whatever they can um, do to acquire the customers they can do but the easier way or the shortcut way is acquire one company so that all the customers of that company will now become the customers of yours okay when i when vodafone acquired spice mobile they did that spice mobile had a few customers uh, and uh, uh, spice mobile was not uh, spice mobile also was a telecom company uh, long back so when uh, spice mobile was not doing great in the market but they had few customers same way for virgin mobile also they had few customers so to acquire their customers vodafone acquired the company uh, company itself okay uh, this was done by uh, lipton india uh, and brook bond brook bond was the leader in the market in the uh, tea business in the chai business okay lipton india wanted to uh, enter uh, into indian market and acquire a brook bond okay so the after the acquisition it was named as lipton india uh, brook bond lipton india okay uh, and lipton india wanted to sell their uh iced tea or the lipton uh, green tea and uh, whatever the teas they were manufacturing to the customers of brook bond so they um, came and acquired uh, brook bond okay uh, so that was their expansion strategy to expand the market i'll go to that company and acquire it okay and some and in some cases patanjali also has did it patanjali wanted to enter into each and every um what do you say in in segment uh, of the market um, uh by selling the uh, by selling uh, groceries by selling toiletries by selling uh, other fmcg products they started uh, acquiring small small companies who were manufacturing local companies who were manufacturing those things and um, entered into that those market okay next is about the financial strength uh, if i acquire a few companies who are uh, having good financial strength who is having cash uh, with the uh, and surplus uh, uh, assets or something uh, which is valuable financially valuable uh, i'll go and acquire that company okay and then again diversification which happens in conglomerate merger i diversify my business by acquiring okay and next is taxation benefits uh, how i do this uh, i as a good company as a big company i'll go and acquire a company which is having a um, tax uh, losses okay is that a very loss it was done by mahindra uh, when satyam was uh, satyam computers sir yeah swapnil is waiting sir okay okay can you admit it please ha any the swapnil okay someone got admitted but i didn't see who it was it theek hai theek oh okay theek so uh, those who are coming now uh, kindly write present in the chat box 
ठीक है no uh, taxation yeah taxation benefits uh, yeah uh, i was talking about satyam computers uh, satyam computers uh, was facing a tough time when uh, their fraud got uh, uh, got public and it was uh, and they were under the scrutiny and the tax authorities so satyam was facing huge losses and mahindra was the company who uh, acquired satyam uh, in order to get tax benefits also and or in order to enter into market uh, for for all the things mahindra acquired satyam because of tax benefits because of diversification because they wanted to enter into it uh, and uh, to expand the market not to expand the market but mostly for diversification and taxation benefits okay uh, so now we have tech mahindra which was earlier satyam so uh, when mahindra had acquired satyam it was called as mahindra satyam okay and then later on they changed the name to mahindra tech mahindra okay uh, so uh, to enter into diversification and tax benefits market expansion kab hota hai pata hai when a company wants to expand their market itself in whatever they are doing they want to expand it so mostly market expansion will be in the case of horizontal mergers okay procurement of supply can guess it it will be in the case of vertical mergers financial strength can be anything diversification will be in the case of conglomerate taxation benefits can be anything they can it can be a horizontal vertical or a conglomerate merger okay uh, and managerial motives finally uh, now uh, the um, what do you say the managers of a company or basically the owners of the company will buy the company uh, will merge the company or acquire a company but in this case the manager will be very happy the top management of that company or the managers who are at very head just like a finance head or marketing head a ceo of one company will be very happy because he'll get one more company to handle and many employees to handle and a huge uh, fi financial strength will be there for that company and uh, because of that his uh, promotion will be there or he'll get some additional benefits or some additional perks so the manager will be very happy so he wants the owners of the company to acquire the company so that uh, his position in the market will be uh, increased so this is the manager motives also the uh, here the uh, managers wants the owners to acquire it okay okay so this was the motives of merger and the synergy i have explained it okay, synergy is when uh, when the merger is happening the combined output of the merger should be more than the individual output that means if this company a value of a, uh, v a stands for value of a plus value of b that means value of uh, company a plus value of company b okay should be less than the value of a and b combined that means vodafone were having 100 customers oh, sorry 100 100000 customers uh, what idea was having 100000 customers so when they are merging they should not be just to 100000 customers it should increase more than that as their efficiency should increase more than that the customer should increase more than that the performance should be increased more than that that means 2 plus 2 should not be is equal to 4 okay 2 plus 2 should be equal to 5 that what's uh, that what's it mean that's what it means okay that means when two finance uh, when one person is solving one finance question another person is solving another finance question when they together solve they can solve three questions uh, at a time uh, or in the time of solving two questions this is something like that uh, even in agriculture it happens there is one uh, land one acre of land uh, or maybe 10 acres of one land which is growing tomatoes okay another uh, 10 acres of land which is growing some another crop okay when they combine the two lands Uh, in 20 acre plot they can produce more than the individual production so that is what synergy is synergy means whenever the combined output is more then uh, it is benefit for benefit and it is uh, we are getting a synergy the merger ho raha hai acquisition ho raha hai jo bhi ho raha hai na uh, because of that a huge profit increase should be there if the other way happens okay like uh, the fight uh, fight started happening and 
um uh, and there is mismanagement uh, because the earlier company we used to do like this uh, now in this company how can we do this aise kuch hone lag gaya there is a fight or mismanagement in the finance department or in the marketing department or in the production department some workers are uh, some workers get used to get some benefits some workers uh, get to you uh, were used to get saturdays as holidays the other companies uh, didn't provide saturday as a holiday ऐसे कुछ हो रहा है एंड देर इज मिस मैनेजमेंट देन दिस सिनर्जी विल नॉट हैपन दैट विल बी कॉल्ड एज अ रिवर्स सिनर्जी देन वो मर्जर क्यों किया ऐसा लगना चाहिए ठीक है दिस वाज द केस व्हेन द बुक स्टोर कंपनी व्हेन देयर वाज एन ऑनलाइन बुक स्टोर कंपनी इट एक्वायर्ड द व्हाट डू यू से द बुक द ब्रिक एंड मोटर बुक स्टोर्स सो व्हेन दे एक्वायर्ड इट एवरीवन थॉट अच्छा द बेस्ट एग्जांपल ऑफ सिनर्जी आई विल गिव यू Uh, there was one restaurant okay uh, which uh, uh, which was uh, selling authentic italian food it had italian cuisine tha okay that restaurant um, wanted to expand their business expand their market but their expansion was in the term of uh, kind of a diversification not that entirely different business but they want uh, wanted to enter into indian taste so and uh italian cuisine provider italian cuisine restaurant acquired another restaurant which was selling moglai food okay uh, uh, indian food basically so when they acquired it and they merged it then the customers who were coming to that restaurant for that italian cuisine they later on realized ki are now this uh, they also serve moglai foods also and it is also getting merged they were not in the same kitchen but very nearby so the uh, the customers of that italian restaurant got to know that ab ye mughlai wale bhi hai and so they, they will not serve a proper italian cuisine so the customers who were uh, coming to that restaurant started moving back and the customers who were uh, the original customers of the mughlai food they started also pulling back because they thought that now the italian cuisine is getting mixed and though, so they will not uh, focus on um, um, uh, cooking mughlai food efficiently so that should not happen in synergies okay now types of synergy you will understand it more properly here types of synergy are three again operating synergy financial synergy and managerial synergy in this case what happens is when i am able to achieve good operation capabilities okay then i'll able to achieve the operating synergy that means there are two kind of companies we are having two sets of factories okay they are having separate um, kind of machines in that factories when these uh, two factories are getting merged or not physically but they have been ordered to produce some items together when these two factories are producing simultaneously then if the output is very high then we are getting operating synergies that means the operations of that those factories okay that should increase or else the supply chain of one of the company was very good and the production capabilities of another company is very good so whatever the production is doing uh, production uh, is happening with the com- second company that produced items are getting shipped very fast because the supply chain of that another company is very good okay the logistics providing the logistics is very good so when they are working together they can perform very well if they are if they were working separately the production was very good of that first company but the supply was not that good for that uh, on the other hand for the second company the production was very slow but the supply uh, the logistics part was very good so we are combining both and um, telling them you do whatever you are efficient in so one part of the company will be doing the production the other part of the company will do will take care only of the logistics so we are getting operating synergy in this case financial synergy also uh, in one of the company if uh, the yeah if in one of the company there is a good kind of a cash flow okay there is huge cash in one of the company in another company there is a good uh, a kind of a profits but low cash flows they can uh, go, make good profits but low cash flows as there and when they are combining they can have financial synergy one of the cash flows and from the other profits 
well, means Infosys is one of the company who sits at a large, a huge cash. Infosys has uh, has huge uh, cash uh, cash savings or cash deposits. It doesn't do much of the spending. Whereas on the other hand, uh, Tech Mahindra, for that matter, or even uh, TCS, who is the competitor of Infosys, they have very less cash, and they take loans from the bank also. Infosys uh, rarely requires a long term loan. It um, generally it takes few short term loans, and um, because they have cash requirements with them. So suppose if Infosys and Tech Mahindra merges, Tech Mahindra posts a huge profit. Infosys also posts huge profit, but huge cash flows out there. Okay, and Mahindra doesn't. Mahindra, Tech Mahindra doesn't have much cash flows. So if these two companies combine, they will have huge cash flows also and huge profits also. So we'll achieve financial synergy in this case. Same way for managerial synergy. Okay, managerial synergy if. to if uh, individual managers were uh, running uh, the business and then uh, together they can um, achieve uh, managerial synergy that means if one company is there who is into research and development okay very good in research and development they can uh, research and uh, make a tremendous in improvement in the product development okay the okay that that is their uh, management of that team they are good in research and development there is another team who another company who is excellent in marketing that marketing whatever product you give them okay so one company who is in good in r&d but not good in marketing cannot is not able to sell their products another company who is excellent in marketing but they don't have good products to sell in the market so when these two companies will combine the r&d team will focus on only on r&d and the marketing team will focus on marketing those um, well developed product by the r&d team so we will achieve a managerial synergy the both the managers will be very happy because r&d team will only focus on r&d and marketing team will have uh, excellent products to sell uh, in the market okay our next is value creation okay uh, value creation is uh, uh, What do you say? In these three mergers, horizontal, vertical, and conglomerate, how a value is created, how the benefits for the business is created, okay, how the value is created for the business. Uh, like in horizontal merger uh, with the, like uh, with Flipkart and Mintra when they got merged, um, the Flipkart had uh, added value into the business because Flipkart was not that good in selling clothes online, but Mintra was the market leader uh, in. selling clothes online okay uh, so in order to uh, create value uh, mintra uh, was acquired by flipkart and flipkart also got the market share also the market um, uh, and the customers and even uh, the value which was uh, created by the mintra in the minds okay so they got the brand they got the customers and uh, they uh, they got the market space you know, to sell uh, the clothes online okay so it was the horizontal merger created value for mintra uh, sorry sorry for flipkart okay by acquisition of mintra and one more old example can be uh, uh, there was hindustan liver limited okay it got merged with tata oil mills uh, company okay so uh, they both had similar products hindustan uh, liver ka or tata oil mills company ka and when they uh, combined uh, they created a, a huge customer base and a huge value for them okay for a horizontal merger whereas for a vertical merger uh, the value will be created if uh, there will be a cost reduction as i am going in acquiring the uh, company from the previous stage or in the next stage by uh, backward integration or forward integration uh, i'll be able to cut down the cost and i'll able to create value for the customers for the company as also and for the customers also i can reduce the cost and i can uh, sell my products at a lesser cost and at a yeah, good quality of the product also so i can create value for the company as well as value for the customers and finally for the conglomerate merger conglomerate is when again uh, the company is acquiring another company which is into different industry so if there is a uh, there is a big company a huge company like uh, maybe like reliance or tata they are starting uh, uh, like there was a talks with air india that tata will acquire uh, air india or there were talks with reliance that can reliance acquire air india because air india is into very uh, difficult state 
okay if suppose a huge conglomerate like tata acquires air india they enter into it will be a conglomerate merger because tata is not into airlines okay is it is just in joint venture with vistara okay and tata vistara but if tata totally buys air india then it will be helpful for the air india and helpful for the all the employees and everyone related to air india all the stakeholders so a value will be created for uh, the old air india employees and all air india staff and uh, the flights will be utilized and the airports kabhi sab everyone will be happy okay so value will be created by tata if tata go and acquires air india it will be a conglomerate merger again okay in theories of merger again uh, again uh, pretty dry uh, efficiency theory okay in differential efficiency the first one okay there are uh, six uh, efficiency theories and there are again uh, another six uh, theories of uh, theories of merger continue okay so in first efficiency theory uh, differential efficiency in this it uh, says that there are two companies uh, who are having one having very efficient managers another is having less efficient managers or less efficient staff so that efficient the company with the efficient man managers acquire the company with non efficient they can train those employees and train those staff and managers and increase their efficiency okay uh, inefficient management is when th uh, there is a company who is having an inefficient managers uh, the owners of that company um, are are not able to remove the managers ठीक है मैनेजर्स ने ऐसा अपना कंट्रोल रखा है कंपनी पे दैट द ओनर्स कैन नॉट रिमूव देम बिकॉज द कंपनी विल नॉट वर्क बिकॉज दे इफ दे वर रिमूव्ड सो द ओनर्स एंड दे आर नॉट डूइंग प्रॉपर बिजनेस आल्सो द मैनेजर्स ओके सो द ओनर्स व्हाट दे विल डू दे विल सेल ऑफ द कंपनी टू अनदर कंपनी ओके सेल ऑफ देयर कंपनी इटसेल्फ सो दैट द मैनेजर्स कैन बी रिमूव्ड और रिप्लेस्ड और Uh, uh, they can be uh, or do a uh, job posting internal job posting can be done of that managers and in their place good managers can be hired so if they are not able to remove the managers they'll sell off the sell off the stakes major stakes of the company and so that the other company will take care of those managers okay then next uh, third is operating synergy okay i've already told explained okay uh, then uh, next is pure diversification again a kind of a conglomerate merger okay because of efficiency uh, because of efficiency in operation okay uh, i am acquiring the business because uh, to enter into a new industry i am acquiring a business that is as per this theory okay next is strategic realignment to changing environment if there is a company uh, suppose in this case in electric vehicles uh, so uh, now we everyone every company is uh, planning to ram at least introduce uh, one of their electric vehicles into the market so if there is a company uh, who doesn't have any knowledge about how to manufacture that electric vehicles then with the changing environment they will try to acquire a smaller company uh, which is in which is doing a research in electric vehicles or which is uh, starting an electric vehicle okay so that uh, that is the easy way to do it okay when kodak was the market leader in the uh, old cameras uh, when sony started uh, the digital camera era then kodak uh, also wanted to start the digital camera but kodak didn't knew how to manufacture digital camera so kodak went and acquired many companies who were uh, into the research uh, or who were selling digital camera small companies okay so, so they and uh, for that uh, changing environment they started acquiring uh, the companies and lastly undervaluation undervaluation is uh, there will be certain companies who perform very well but they are um, uh, they uh, people do, doesn't know them okay they are not able to sell the products uh, efficiently in the market they have they are having good products but their products are not getting sold uh, properly and so because of that the value of that company has been under uh, undervalued that means people are not valuing the company the company value can be uh 100000 100000 crores but uh, the market is valuing that company at very lesser price maybe 10 10000 crores 
so in that case uh, we can go and acquire that company because that company has future potential to grow okay same way in the stock uh, stocks you uh, you have seen this undervaluation overvaluation um, proper valuation okay undervaluation of a stock is when the share price of a company is low and it should be higher as per your calculation many of you are doing fundamental analysis so as per your fundamental analysis and the uh, uh, the intrinsic value which you have got is very higher and the market value of the company is lower that means the company is undervalued the stocks of the company is undervalued now you should go and buy the stock of that company because the it is undervalued and it has potential to grow the same way it happens in mergers okay so the i guess the last one the second last one uh, information signaling information signaling is uh, if the share market is Uh, share market of any industry okay like uh, we have bank nifty fmcg farm uh, fmcg uh, nifty or uh, nifty pharma okay so if the stock market of these companies is increasing then the companies who are into that sector will also increase that is our information okay that means uh, in uh, during the covid uh, se- initial covid season the Uh, pharmaceutical industries where um, the sales of the pharmaceutical industries got increased so the share prices of cipla for ranbaxy for sun pharma uh, and for lupin for dr reddy they slowly they started increasing so if i am having a, if there is a small pharma company and uh, there is another company a big pharma company the two pharma companies are there if i feel that my industry is um, booming now so i'll go and acquire a smaller pharma company also. so that is my signal that the entire industry is going up so i'll go and acquire okay that is also uh, one of the case why uh, flipkart acquired mintra because there was an increase in the online retail business okay and uh, uh, flipkart wanted to acquire the market share of the mintra that was the uh, signal that the entire industry is going up but when walmart acquired flipkart that was not the information signal walmart wanted to enter into its uh, enter into this business and walmart is not into online retailing okay walmart is into brick and mortar stores brick, huge brick and mortar stores are there of walmart walmart is not into online retailing and definitely not in india so walmart wanted to enter into india theek okay, hai in online retailing so that was a pure diversification or else a conglomerate merger okay which happened okay next is agency problem and managerialism agency problems if my agency is not performing well okay so i'll go and acquire that okay uh, or else a similar kind of a company uh, which which can be which my agency is doing okay so the maybe an automobile company who is uh, getting their tires or maybe some accessories from one company and that company is not performing well not doing great so a uh, better to leave that company and acquire another company who is into auto auxiliaries and acquire that okay or acquire the same company itself so when they come under our control they'll perform well okay and uh, next is a free cash flow hypothesis uh, free cash flow hypothesis is uh, the uh, previous example which i told infosys has huge cash flows huge cash hai infosys ke paas so if i want uh, my uh, what do you say i am a bigger company i want to acquire infosys uh, because just because of cash then that will uh, that theory will be under this free cash flow hypothesis matlab ek company hai jiske pas bahut cash hai okay so that because of that reason uh, it, as it is having cash i am going and acquiring that company then it will be a free cash flow hypothesis or to get the market power to get the market share and to um Uh, for the tax effects if i go and acquire sick companies then uh, i'll uh, have a benefit for that so that is what the theories of mergers okay i know this was pretty boring okay this uh, will be quite interesting let's see there is waiting or any answer this is uh, thoda sa interesting and also this is very important from the exam perspective also see in industry life cycle you have studied product life cycle okay in that there is introduction stage 
when I'm introducing a product new into the market, it will be an introduction stage. Then there was a growth stage when my product starts getting attention of the customers, the probable customers, prospect, suspect customers, sab log aake kharidna start kar rahe mera product. Then my, I enter into growth stage. Then afterwards, uh, when my company gets noticed by the competitors, my comp the competitors also enter into the same business and uh, other, or the other companies start and uh, start entering into the same business and become my competitors. Now I have to work very hard to sell my products. I need to advertise also to sell my products. I need to give some certain schemes to the customers to sell my product. Then I'll enter into maturity stage and same way for the decline when there is huge maturity and there is no new product development and customer starts finding a new alternative to my product then i go into decline stage so same way happens for the entire industry okay fragmentation stages the industry will not be properly developed it is here and there fragmentation matlab fragments fragments means small small pieces here and there okay small small markets here and there it will happen they, it will not be a good industry the best example for now is the electronic vehicles you have small showrooms and small companies here and there uh, some of the companies you don't have heard also okay apart from bajaj electric vehicles and maruti uh, electric car which is coming tata electric car which is coming but they are in the very nascent stage okay so the entire industry electronic vehicles industry is into fragmentation stage it has not yet developed how the uh, pumping station uh, how the uh, charging stations will be there like you have pumping uh, stations of fuel uh, every every region uh, every uh, what you say locality you have a, a petrol pump so how the charging station will be for electrical vehicles it is not that developed you don't have any idea for uh, those who have electric uh, scooters, they charge at home or they have some certain battery problems also. So it's very new. The entire industry is very new. So that is under fragmentation stage. Why you need to understand is when you are going and acquiring a company, you should know in which uh, stage that company is into. If I'm going and acquiring Komaki, there is a company. Okay, uh, it's manufacturing electric vehicles. Okay, if I want to enter into electric vehicle business, so that will be a pure diversification or a conglomerate merger, but that company is into fragmentation stage. So if I'm acquiring that kind of company, then I need to focus more on product development. Okay, same way for shakeout stage. Shakeout stage is just the industry is uh, getting, what do you say? Uh, it is getting developed. Okay, uh, so if that is the case i should be more focusing on product development as well as on the uh, sales of my product in the shakeout stage okay when i'm going and acquiring a company who is uh, and i'm analyzing the industry and i analyze that the company falls under shakeout stage then i should focus uh, after acquisition of that company or after getting merged uh, that company under me then I should focus more on product development as well as sales of the company because uh, the product is getting in the growth stage. Shakeout stage is when the industry has been just established. Okay, there is a beginning. The customers have started uh, buying uh, the uh, buying the electric vehicles. So electric vehicles, maybe five years down the line, ten years down the line, will come under shakeout stage where there will be. Uh, very clear idea how the uh, charging stations will be how the uh, it, how it will be charged whether our home electricity can be used or not okay so there will be a proper uh, planning for that and proper uh, implementation uh, for the electric vehicles then maybe five or ten years down the line it will be under shakeout stage same way the online retailing is under uh, was under shakeout stage maybe just uh, maybe five uh, five years back five years back uh, or maximum uh, when Flipkart started in 2013, 12 or 13, uh, I ordered my first book from Flipkart. So it was in that case a fragmentation stage. Uh, it took me, uh, it took Flipkart almost 15 days to deliver one book. 
to me uh, at that time because the delivery system was not that good and flipkart used uh, the flipkart person used to call send message that i have reached your home i have delivered uh, the product uh, and they used to get the confirmation from the home they used to take the signature all those documentation was done because uh, there was no confidence and flipkart uh, stressed on cash on delivery they capitalized on cash on delivery because the customers might feel online pay kar rahe kaisa product aayega pata nahi okay so that was in the fragmentation stage later on it uh, went into shake out stage where amazon entered into india okay and many uh, uh, this many companies came into online retailing all the brick and mortar started uh, online retailing big bazaar uh, came into that reliance came into that okay uh, even dmart has an online presence so many of the companies started having online presence so now the company is into maturity stage uh, the industry is into maturity stage the online retailing now if you tell we'll start a online business then we have a tremendous amount of competition in the market so we have reached a maturity stage now they are uh, focusing on schemes okay not just the product development okay then the decline stage can, can be even uh, hotel industry as of now okay or airline industry few airlines uh, if we consider few airlines it, it is in the declining industry but the industry will continue it will not unless we have uh, alternative of uh, flights uh, we uh, uh we we cannot say it is it will be declining uh, but it is under declining stage for that matter after maybe 10 uh, 5 or 10 years the fuel consumption vehicles will be under decline because electric vehicles will take form okay so uh, that is uh, that is all about the industry life cycle why you need to know it uh, as a company because whenever you are going and acquiring a company you should know where the company is and to and what you are going to focus if it is in the fragmentation stage you are going to focus for product development if it is in stake out uh, shake out stage you are going to focus on product development also the sales and uh, try to acquire maximum market share and if it is into maturity stage then you need to focus uh, on giving schemes and uh, uh, what do you say bringing some new innovations in your product so that your maturity doesn't go into decline and if it is in the decline stage better you should not buy it buy or get merged with that company or if you have any plans to revive the company or there are other benefits for you only then you can acquire it the uh, the company who is into decline industry okay okay next is uh, swot analysis and swot analysis is uh, like we did the end actually we did the industry analysis here okay which kind of uh, uh, my company is into which kind of industry now swot analysis also i'll do of a company you have studied this in strategic management the swot analysis and you have done in the what is it in your organization study also you have done a swot analysis of a company so even for merging i am buying out a company so to buy out a company i need to do the analysis the swot analysis to know what are the strengths of that company what are the weaknesses of that company and what are the opportunities i will have if i buy that company in the market okay and what are the threats if i buy this company in the market uh i'll begin with the threats okay uh, as you know if there are two big companies Uh, who are having almost seventy to eighty percent market share combined? If one company is getting acquired by another company, the there will be a huge uh, what you say revolt against it and a uh, huge restrictions from the government side because it will be a kind of a monopoly which will be built and the government and the people doesn't want monopoly. Okay, so to avoid monopoly, there can be restrictions uh, uh, in the merger deal. which is happening in future retail and reliance okay oh, sorry uh, future group and reliance so future group is getting acquired by reliance and this is been restricted by amazon because it will become a uh, such a huge company that it will tend to become a monopoly and it will cut down all the competition okay and uh, because sometimes when company acquires one comp- uh, another company they are not interested in 
uh, running that uh, running that company they just wanted to kill the competition okay when gillette uh, uh, brand okay uh, the shaving br uh, shaving blades brand which came uh, when it came into india it was not interested in uh, manutras was the le uh, leader at that time manutras ka shaving blades aate the they were leader uh, in india before gillette came so when gillette came after the liberalization of 1991 Uh, Gillette didn't want. Uh, were not interested in the whatever the assets the Malhotras had. They just wanted to kill the competition. So Gillette came, acquired the Malhotra groups, um, uh, the entire business of the Malhotra groups of selling uh, shaving blades, and they just uh, killed the competition. So Gillette was during that time. Gillette was the only uh, shaving blades until now. Gillette is the market leader in uh, selling the shaving creams and shaving blades and uh, whatever the shaving requirements are there. Okay, so they wanted to kill the competition. So that is uh, when that is happening. That becomes a threat for the organization also. If you are acquiring a company in which you will you are killing the competition, then you may get restrictions from the public or from the government. Okay, but you will have ample amount of opportunities. Okay, uh, like when Coca Cola started um, forcing the Parley company to sell off their brands. Uh, it was uh, tempting the managers who are managing the parley company uh, by huge perks huge bonuses huge salaries and come to coca cola we'll offer you mm, okay so that was uh, the opportunity uh, coca cola found out the india is a huge market to sell cold drinks okay what what is there in the cold drink it is sugar water and some flavors and uh, the gas is put into it so a rated drink they are selling sugars and waters okay but they have acquired a huge market share okay we drink a cold drink yeah okay that is a different topic but uh, we we just consume a flavored uh, aerated drink with lots of sugar and water in that uh, nothing else uh, we don't consume it because of health okay uh, because there is no health in cold drink we don't consume it because of taste because if we ta if you close your eyes taste coke or taste pepsi you will not find any difference Okay, uh, you don't uh, consume it because of taste. You only consume the marketing. It is part of marketing. You have only consume uh, the cold drinks because of the marketing strategies uh, which the big comp these big companies have done. They are selling you the lifestyle. Okay, so company finds an opportunity. Uh, they sell the lifestyle uh, to the whole of the population, and uh, they can easily uh, enter into the market. Okay, if they see that. Uh, if i acquire a company i'll have a huge opportunity then i'll go and uh, acquire it and also if there are there is good strengths in the company good managers in that company good assets of the company okay mm, uh, then i'll acquire it uh, and i'll check the weaknesses if these weaknesses can be overcome uh, after the acquisition then there there'll be no problem okay for example uh, cafe coffee day has huge estates in uh, in karnataka so if i want to if i want to acquire um, if i want if i want to basically start my coffee business if i am starbucks if i want a coffee business uh, if my plantation of coffee should come from india itself then i want coffee estates uh, as a starbucks it will be very difficult for me to buy coffee estates okay so what i'll do i'll just go and acquire a, coffee, a cafe coffee day because cafe coffee day owns many of the coffee estates in karnataka so in the, in the south karnataka so if i acquire cafe coffee day i don't i'm not interested in what, which customers comes into cafe coffee day or i don't i'm not interested in the retail outlets of cafe coffee day i'm only interested in acquiring the assets the the estates coffee estates so i'll go and uh, acquire the entire company itself in order to get hold of the, those assets so that is the strengths which i am looking for as a starbucks so i'll do a entire swot analysis whenever i'm buying a company okay so there was there is a huge matlab recently in grand thornton also i was discussing with of uh, with one of your seniors there is a uh, there was an opening for the mergers and acquisition post okay in mergers and acquisition post uh, in uh, in gt in grand thornton you are suppose you are supposed to analyze uh, a company okay uh, okay it is a finance company so all the financial aspects of that company 
was supposed to get uh, analyzed in strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats all the things will come the financial strength the marketing strength the opera operating strength the managerial strength uh, the legal strength okay if they have uh, too many licenses okay then it will become a legal strength so the financial strength of the company uh, was getting analyzed okay so there was a job opening for that what are the financial weaknesses of the company what are the opportunities uh, financial opportunities if we have the company if there is a huge is there is a huge cash flow then it will be an opportunity for me i can utilize that cash for my business okay so i do a swot analysis and also i do a industry analysis and finally i analyze the bcg matrix one last minute you give me uh, and the bcg matrix well i have discussed it in the last class uh, i need to understand where my company is okay just give me one minute i need to analyze where my uh, where the company is when i'm analyzing it okay whether it is a star performer okay it is having high market share high market growth and if that is the case uh, my target company is then i am i'll be ready to pay a higher amount if i am acquiring a company who is in this quadrant in dogs then i'll not pay much uh, to that company to acquire it okay because it is having low market share and low market growth um, this is a kind of a, a example for air india okay air india is under this quadrant it has a low market share very few people go uh, travel with air india and it has low market growth the airline industry is not growing now it is almost uh, uh, stand still okay the industry is into maturity or decline stage so uh, air india falls under under here so when uh, tata is getting offered to buy air india then tata will try to buy it at a lesser price if i am a company uh, when uh, this uh, facebook acquired whatsapp with 18 billion dollars uh, 18 yeah 18 billion dollars um, no, sorry a walmart acquired flipkart with 18 billion dollars it was uh, uh the flipkart was the star performer okay or the uh, star in the bcg matrix in this quadrant so that's the reason 18 billion was the okay deal with the flipkart and walmart okay similarly when uh, facebook acquired um, this whatsapp whatsapp was the leader um, the market share of whatsapp in that uh, social media was very high and market growth was also very high so facebook wanted to uh, acquire that and uh, eliminate the competition of whatsapp and the facebook chat was no longer doing good so it paid very uh, a huge amount okay so same way i need to analyze where my target company is as uh, so these things i'll be analyzing bcg matrix spot analysis and industry life cycle okay any one can be uh, you can consider it as an important for the exam okay so that's uh, that's all about the first module in the next class i'll begin with the second one okay i'll try to complete that as well okay second module is also about uh, entirely theory you will not have uh, any problems in that okay uh, i have a revision video of this module as well uh, on the internet if you could find it just write the, the subject code okay in uh, in youtube you you can find the you can find the revision i did a revision last year so it will it will be a revision video okay okay so that's it uh, any doubts you can write in the chat or ask me i hope everyone has written present over here so any doubts or shall i close it i'll give the uh, notes now okay so vaishnavi you want to ask something no so okay okay all fine uh, then i'll close the meeting your next class is at 12 20 12 30 for those who have taken marketing okay so now then see you